Hi everyone. So thank you, Ilaria, for the introduction. Um, so today, um, so when Tony asked me to uh, give a talk, <laughs> hi Tony. Um, he told me to come up with a topic that's uh, fitting for the new year, for starting the new year. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I thought this one could be a very fitting topic to talk about, which is giving account of ourselves. So um, disclaimer, when I timed my, when I practiced my talk this morning, it came around to 31 minutes, but I tend to speak fast on the spot, so it's probably going to be more 20-ish minutes, okay? Just a heads up. Or it could be longer. We never know. <laughs> we never know. <laughs> and the audio. <laughs> I like giving credit when credit is due. So if you're interested, these are a bunch of YouTube sermons. Uh, it's all Coptic Orthodox references. Okay. <laughs> the agenda for today. So we're going to talk about what does it mean to give account of ourselves? Why is it important? And then we're going to talk about what exactly do we give an account on? And then how do we do so? And then when should we be giving an account of ourselves? And there is a pop quiz, five questions. There may or may not be very small prizes, okay? I'll leave that up to the end. <laughs> okay, so these are my reference. Okay, so what is giving account of oneself and why is that important? So if I give you guys like a, a couple seconds to scan the slides and I ask you to come up with like one repetitive theme or a word that keeps repeating. Does anyone have any ideas? And this is not included in the prizes. The prizes are at the end. Self, yes, Mina, good job, Sah. So it's self, right? So it's giving account of ourselves. It's, it's this time when we're actually sitting down with ourselves and it's time to point the fingers to us, right? So it's time that we're ready to convict ourselves, condemn ourselves, do some really deep self-examination and self-reflection. Good job, Mina. Okay, so, and why is this important? Um, if you guys think about it, the very first step to making something right is actually admitting that, that there is something wrong, right? Because if we think everything is cool, if we think everything is all right, why do we even need to give an account of ourselves? And what would we even give an account for, right? So really sitting down with ourselves and really being our own judge, it's the first step to repentance because it's, it's the exact same step that the, de that the devil tries his hardest to prevent, right? Because if, and he does it by making us very, very busy, right? He just throws at us life distractions, a lot of noises, because when we're very preoccupied with life, we don't really have this time to sit down qu quietly and like one like one on one quality time with God right so and if we never do this if we never take that step we're never going to be offering true repentance right because if we don't admit that we're wrong that there is nothing to repent about and it also this this time of us giving account of ourselves it it helps us detect the undetectable if you guys think about it like it's very easy to notice or to pick on things that we said or things that we did but what about like any thoughts that came across our minds, right? Or any feelings of the heart? That be, it becomes a, a lot more tricky to pick on those things if we're not actually sitting down and really trying to give accounts for those things. Things like, have, did I feel jealous today? Were there any lustful feelings or thoughts that are not exactly pure, right? Did I feel prideful in that specific moment? So all those feelings and thoughts, they are very, they can go, they can go undetected unless we actually dedicate time to think about it. And one of the sermons, it really, really gave a nice analogy. Imagine you have a, a glass of water and you fill it with water, but then you grab some, some sand or dust and then you put it in the exact same glass of water. And then you start shaking this glass of water very, very hard, right? What happens to the water? Is it, is it still pure? No, right? It turns cloudy, turbid, right? And you can't really tell what's water or what's sand or dust anymore. This is if you keep shaking it, right? Shaking it as it's too noisy around us. But if we sit that glass of water on a table, do not touch it, quietly just sit it like just let it sit the water starts separating from the sand or the dust right and this is where we can really look at that glass of water and telling how much water is there versus how much sand or dust is there and that's exactly what what happens when we sit down and give account of ourselves right because we are in god's image and likeness right so 
we out, we're the water and we're supposed to be pure, right? But then when we start throwing in all the distractions, all the noise around us, and we just keep shaking, there's no time to actually separate and really look at what, how much water do we have versus how much sand or dust. So I found this analogy really, really nice because it really, it really reflects the importance of quiet time, right? That time that we take to sit down and give account of ourselves. And a lot of the time, so the, the last bullet point here, so God is a just judge, right? So is God merciful? 100%, that's a fact. Is God kind and loving? 100%, that's a fact. But I think we also tend to forget that God is fair and God is just, right? So we shouldn't really be abusing the fact that, oh, God is so merciful, he's so loving, he's just gonna keep giving us opportunities because he will, but at some point the time will run out, right? So we have to be our own judge and be ready that in, in when we stand up in front of God, we have to be ready to give account for ourselves. And 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, St. Paul says, Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. And unfortunately, sometimes like the devil uses service as a way to distract us, right? As a way to, to steer us away from really giving that quality time to God. Because he's going to make us very busy with service. Service is a good thing, right? But when it starts taking away from my own quality time with God, then that's when we really need to be careful. So St. Paul says, uh, lest when I, ha I have preached to others, preaching, preaching is obviously a good thing, I myself should become disqualified. So we should, we should always be careful lest we become disqualified. In Luke chapter 10, verse 41, God says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. Were the, what, what were the things that were troubling Martha? Were they bad things? No, she wanted to make sure Jesus is comfortable. She wanted to make sure these are, there is food. So these are all service items, right? These are all good things, but it was taking away from her time to, with God. And St. Macarius the Great says, My brother, judge yourself before the others judge you, because the judgment belongs to God. So it's the whole idea that we need to be our own judges on earth, so we can, we're ready to give account for ourselves when we're standing in front of God. Okay, so now that we know what is giving account of oneself and why is it important, what exactly do we give an account on? Okay, khalas, I'm ready now to give account of myself, but what am I examining myself for? What am I reflecting on? So the first and the foremost, most important one being, we need to examine our relationship with God, right? And it can come very obvious that the first thing that we actually look at is the sins that we committed, right? And in the absolution of the compliant prayer, what do we say? The absolution of the 12th hour, what do we say? O Lord, all our sins which we have committed against you in this day, whether in deeds or in words or, or through all senses. Exactly, right? So it's not just words and deeds. It's back to idea that there are thoughts and feelings that really creep in. And unless we really have time to actually think deeply about what, what were the feelings or the thoughts that I felt today. Was I prideful, for example, giving this talk? Were there feelings of lust, right? Was, were there any hints of hate or thoughts of revenge? And unfortunately, some sins are very, become very habitual that we no longer recognize as sins anymore, right? For example, I'm too lazy to stand up and pray and read the Bible every night. I may not, subconsciously, I may not even re recognize that's a sin because it becomes a habit, right? Or I wake up for Sunday and I just head straight to communion. I don't even attend the gospel, be the gospel being the minimum that we should do, but, right? So it becomes, oh, like, that's a sin, really walking in late to the liturgy. So all the sins that become very consistent, very repetitive, that they unfortunately become standard regular behaviors or become habits. And it's not only things that, that the evil that we did, it's also any virtues that we're lacking in, right? So any good that we did not do, any shortcomings. So things like when God gave me free time, how did I use this time? I may not have used it for something evil per se, but did I use it for something good, right? Did I use it to glorify his name? So this is a so so the virtues that we could be lacking in is am I loving enough? Like for example, when I saw this tante at church and she was struggling picking up her groceries. Yes, she didn't explicitly ask me to go in and help her, but did I offer help? 
So am I lack, lacking in love, right? So this morning, for example, Irini annoyed me, for example. I lost my temper, <laughs> okay? But this is me lacking in self-control, right? This is me lacking in patience. So, so we really need to sit down and, and reflect on what virtues are we lacking in and any, what are our shortcomings. So in James 4, um, verse 17, it says, therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. So he didn't do evil, but he knew he should have been doing something good, but he didn't do it. And that's a sin. Okay, so as you guys see, like we're moving deeper, right? So it's things that we, evil things that we committed or good things that we did not do, virtues that we're lacking in. And number three becomes the sinful potentials. So they may not necessarily be sins, but they have the potential for sinning. What's the first thing that can come to mind? Sinful. What's an example of a sinful potential? What about friends? Bad company, right? So I, if, for example, I have bad company surrounding me, I may not be exactly be like, participating whatever evil things they're doing but it's a potential right because at some point i may fall into temptation i may do it exactly like them so in first um, thessalonians 5 22 it says abstain from every form of evil and in arabic it says shib shar so it's not evil it's a form of evil but it's still evil right so it's shib shar it's a sinful potential so in Second Peter um, uh, chapter two verses seven to nine, can I have someone read it for us? Where's my phone? Any volunteers? <laughs> uh, Second Peter chapter two verses seven to nine. I, uh, I have it open. Yes, go for it. Uh, and delivered righteous lot, or maybe I should start from the beginning of the sentence. Uh, seven to nine? Yes. And delivered righteous lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from the day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Right. So he was a righteous man, right? So it says in verse 8, for that righteous man dwelling among them. So he was surrounded by those by, by the evil company dwelling among them, among them, tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds, right? So it becomes a sinful potential. Thanks, Amina. That we may 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 be, may fall into later on and then the last one is the spiritual canons or the practices right and this is this is more obvious right so spiritual practice like am i reading the bible am i praying am i do, going to confession am i taking communion and maybe less obvious stuff like am i giving my tithes Laushur. am i giving my firstlings Bukur, right so and it's not just uh, oh whether i'm doing those or not it's why am i doing those What's, what's my own incentive for doing those? Am I doing it to just check it off my list? Am I doing it because just that's how our parents raised us? Or am I doing it to actually draw closer to God? So to conclude that first point, we need to really judge ourselves or examine ourselves um, for our relationship with God, right? This year, did I draw closer to God or did I gr grow further away from Him? Is my relationship with God becoming lukewarm? Because we also we also know that lukewarm isn't good either, right? So did I bring people closer to, to God or did I drive people away from God? So that's the very the most important thing that we should be giving an account for. Second one is becomes my relationship with others, right? And we already touched upon it um, before, but the, we need to know that. The moment we sin, that automatically weakens our, our relationship with God, right? But what brings back this relationship? What, what strengthens it again? Why, why do we give an account for ourselves? What was the first point? Reflection. Yes. Why do we reflect? It's the first step to? Repentance. Repentance, right? So the moment I sin, okay, sure, that weakens my relationship with God. But when we, when we give true, account, true and honest account for ourselves, this is the first step to repentance and the first step to strengthening our relationship with God again.
And then my relationship with others, right? This is also a pretty obvious one. So how is my relationship with others, right? Um, am I holding grudge? Do I really forget? Uh, do I really forgive? And if I forgive, do I forget? Or for example, when Irini annoys me again, I'd be like, oh, remember last, sorry, I don't know who to pick one. <laughs> so when, so I'd be like, oh, remember last week, you did the exact same thing and you promised not to do it again, right? So I keep recalling or remembering what Irini annoyed me. So this is not true forgiveness, right? And then the third point is, we really need to examine how we used our gifts or talents. And this one, um, so this one I wasn't actually gonna include because it didn't really, it didn't really like, it didn't really think about it, but now it makes sense, right? So God gives us a lot of talents or gifts. And when we stand up in front of God, he's gonna ask us to give account for those talents, right? Can someone read for me the parable of the talents in Matthew 25 uh, verses 14 to 30? Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30. Amir? Sure. Thank you. From 14 to 30? Yes. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his good to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To each according to his own ability, and immediately he went to a journey. <coughs> Then who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled the accounts with them. So he, he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things, and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he had received the one talent, came and said, Lord, I knew you had a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you know that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my, my coming I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore take the talent from him and give it to him who has, has ten talents. For to everyone who has more we will give it different and, and we will have abundance, but from from who does not have even what he has to be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Thank you, Amiru. Good, so this is the parable of the talents, right? And so how are we using our talents? Are we wasting them? Are they going to waste? Are we doing it like, like, like the third servant did where he just buried, he dug and buried his talents? Or are we multiplying them, right? Am I using it for the glory of God? So when God is gonna come and like settle accounts with us, are we prepared to give account of those talents? Because it's a, it's a, it's a huge difference between what get, God said for the, to the first two servants versus what he said for the to the third one. So the one who, did, who had five talents multiplied them and got, got five more, the one who had two talents multiplied them and got two more. And for both of them, the Lord said, well done, good and faithful servants. You were faithful over a few things. Are we, are, I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And it's very, very different from what he said to the third servant, right? He said, you wicked and lazy servant, right? So you always need to keep in mind that those talents that we have, we don't own them, right? We're entrusted with them. So we need to be prepared to give an account for them in front of God. And then the last one is examining our longing to the kingdom of heaven. So examining what's our goal here on earth. Where are my eyes set? 
are my eyes set on the earth and all the earthly gifts or is my eye are my eyes set on heaven so Abu Dawood Lam'i in one of his sermons said if so the heaven is very it's like a very very expensive gift right I need to really work hard to gain heaven versus earth is very cheap so he said if our eyes eyes are set on heaven we're gonna get earth thrown in right it's for Ilbia as if it's like I'm walking into this store I spent so much money on this very expensive gift and then the owner goes like see you spent so much money here just take those few extra cheap things on board so the cheap things that get thrown in if our eyes are in heaven is on earth but Abu Nadawud Lamey says if our if our eyes are set on earth We'll, we'll neither get nor heaven on earth or earth, right? So we really need to examine where, like, what is our goal? What am I working towards? Am I working towards earthly pleasures or am I, more, am I working towards the kingdom of heaven? Okay, so now that we know what is giving account of ourselves, why do we do it and what do we give an account on? Now we're going to discuss how to, how to start giving account of oneself. So the first point becomes quiet time, right? God does not work in the noise. God does not work in the distractions, right? We need to really sit down with ourselves and it's just me and God. It's not me and my sister and God. And it's not me, my friend and God. It's not me and my partner and God. It's not me, my parents and God, right? It's just me and God. And we really need to quiet down our hearts and quiet down our minds because again, God's word is, is heard when we're calm, right? And, and we, we, we need to shut down all of life's distractions and noises. And then Abu Nabulis George, he's, he has a very nice sermon on this. He said we start um, giving account of ourselves by two prayers, right? So first of all, open my eyes, O Lord, to my own sins. Because this is the whole point of giving account of myself. Instead of pointing the fingers to other people, I'm pointing the fingers toward me, right? We really... Like we ask God, open my eyes to my own sins. So I start giving account for them. And then second, um, the second prayer, like Samuel said, speak Lord for your servant hears. Because at the end of this sitting with me giving account of, of, on, of myself, I'm going to be coming up with a treatment plan, right? Something that I can do to draw closer to God. And God is going to help me do it. So I need to open my ears to hear God's word. So Sam, like Samuel said, speak Lord for my servant hears. So these are the two prayers that we start with. And then before we get into it, we need to keep in mind three facts, right? Number one, this may or may not be on the pop quiz. Okay, number one, first fact, God is merciful and kind. Okay, second fact, we are all sinners and God loves us in spite of our sins. Okay, we've, we're, we're, we for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So regardless of what comes out of this sitting, God will not love me any less. And God is still the loving father. Okay, so fact number one, God is merciful and kind. Fact number two, we're all sinners, but God loves me in spite of my sin. And then number three, there is no sin that's greater than God's mercy. Okay, so these are the three facts. And like Irini actually she actually taught me this. She was like, Rabbina biyit lakkiklina. Like God only cares about our own salvation, right? So God is actually making excuses for me to go to heaven. So he doesn't care about anything else except me reaching the kingdom of heaven. So if we keep those three facts or three truths in mind before we start giving account of ourselves, we go in with a very positive mindset, right? A very hopeful uh, mindset that regardless of what comes out of this, I'm still God's child. So number four, number four is when things get serious, okay? So number four, we need to be open, honest, serious, and stern, okay? Because it's just me and God, right? No one else is there. So I really need to be honest of what, the, where did things go wrong? And I need to be my own prosecutor and not a lawyer. So Abuna Bulis George says this very, very nicely. What's the difference between a prosecutor and a lawyer? This one, this one, this one. Exactly, right? The prosecutor, prosecutor looks to convict. He looks to press charges. But a lawyer looks to defend and make excuses. In this, in this sitting, I need to be my own prosecutor and not my lawyer, right? I need to convict myself and hold myself accountable, pressing charges against myself. 
because we have two options. When we stand, stand in front of God and we are giving account of what happened of our life on earth, we have two options. It's either I was my own prosecutor on earth and God becomes my lawyer in heaven, or it's the other way around. It's either that I, I, was, I kept making excuses for myself. I thought I, there was, there's no, everyone else is to blame. This, this is when, so I was my own lawyer in, on earth and then God becomes my prosecutor. So the great, um, great Saint Anthony says, if we remember our sins, God will forget them. But if we forget our sins, God will remember them. So on earth, we always need to keep remembering our sins. And the devil can be like, oh, why are you too cruel in yourself? Like, why are you exaggerating? It was unintentional. It really annoyed you. It's not my fault, right? It's not your fault. So, so it, he, could keep, he could keep really making me move away from, from blaming myself and play, blaming everyone else, right? Um, so St. Paul of Tarsus, after he received God's calling and beca became St. Paul the Apostle, he still convicted himself, right? So in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10, it says, For I am the least of the apostles who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. So even though the sin has already been forgiven, he already became St. Paul, and yet he kept remembering his sin, right? He, be kept, he kept being his own prosecutor and convicting himself. But with this, we need to keep one thing in mind that two extremes are not very useful because the devil can also be like, oh, you're so terrible. Instead of, oh, you did nothing wrong, he can take us to the other extreme, okay? How did you commit this sin? How dare you call yourself a child of God? There is no hope. You keep making this sin over and over again. This is beyond forgiveness. And, and then we fall into this despair and excessive guilt and be like, oh, I'm, like there is no chance for me. So both extremes are not right because remember what was the third truth or fact there is no exactly there is no sin greater than god's mercy and love for mankind and then the last point becomes we need to stop the blame game and stop making excuses there is no more blaming irini for being annoying it's my fault right i am i i, I lack in self-control i'm very short-tempered i'm impatient in pope shinoda's book he says, this ex these kind of excuses that you keep making can falsely acquit you in order to keep, and in order to lighten the burden of guilt and keep making the same sin, right? And this makes sense because of, if I keep thinking it's, it's Irene's fault, then it's never my own fault, right? I keep, I keep blaming everyone else. So I keep pointing fingers at everyone else as opposed to pointing fingers on me. And this leads me to keep doing it because if I'm not admitting that it's wrong, then why not keep doing it? In Romans um, uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man. At the end of the day, I'm going to be giving account for my, for my own life and not for Irene's, right? It's going to be my own sins and not Irene's. So remember how, the, how Joseph, he was being tempted by sin every single day. And yet in spite of that, what did he say? How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And, and Pope Shenouda puts it in a very beautiful way. He says, Ex internal weaknesses surrender to external pressures. So if I have an, an internal weakness that I need to work on, I, and I keep surrendering to external pressure, this only highlights the fact that I do have an internal weakness, right? Because Joseph was very strong. Joseph kept being tempted by sin every single day, and yet he did not give in, right? So we really need to focus on those internal weaknesses and address them. And then, what number is this? One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, point six is confession, right? So now that I know, my own shortcomings, I know my own sins, it's time to actually say it out loud, right? And it takes, it's part of, it's part of humbling myself down because I've, when I'm sitting with Abuna, confessing my sins out loud is yes, I totally admit to it, right? Yes, I'm impatient. Yes, I'm prideful, right? Yes, I lack in the loving virtue, for example. So, so, uh, so confession becomes, it goes hand in hand after with giving account of ourselves. 
St. Moses, when he was confessing his sins, St. Macarius saw an angel literally wiping clean St. Moses' slate. As St. Moses kept confessing every sin, the angel was wiping away his sins until it became a clean slate, right? So this is what confession does, right? Giving account of myself and admitting it out loud in front of Abuna. So treatment plan, right? So imagine we did this very thorough self-examination and we didn't come up with a treatment plan. So what's the point? Like a patient walks in to a clinic and the doctor does a thorough examination, a full workup and a care plan, and he runs all those um, important tests. And, and then he goes like, oh, you have a very resistant bacterial infection. Is that useful? No, right? It's not useful. Give me something, right? Prescribe something. Give me an antibiotic, right? So this is where we need to come up with a treatment plan. So it's, it's easy to come up with the treatment plan when, when we've really taken this seriously. When I know exactly what I lack on or lack in or I know exactly what I need to work on, it becomes easy to come up with a treatment plan. So write it down, right? We can't just keep everything in here. We need to write it down. And we need to share it with someone. And I, I, I would advise not to everyone, pick someone who you really trust. It could be your father of confession in order for that someone to hold you accountable to the points that you listed. And check it every now, check it regularly and make sure you're actually following up on it and start it right away. Don't postpone it. Like, for example, when I'm studying, if it's 7.05, I missed it. I need to wait till it's 8, right? But we can't do this here. We need to take it seriously and we need to start it ASAP. And we conclude with prayer. Just like we started with prayer, we need to conclude with prayer, right? Because God knows us even better, way better than we know ourselves, right? God knows us best. So he, we ask him to help us carry out this treatment plan. We ask him to help us persist with it, right? And take it seriously. Okay, amazing. So now that we know how to give account of ourselves, when do we do it? When do we sit down and give account of ourselves? Sorry? End of the year. <laughs> this is how most of us actually do it, so, right? So this, it's true. Some of us, all, most of us do it in special occasion, right? It's Lent. It's Advent. It's our birthday. It's the new year. It's, um, it's Kiak. It's the Holy Week, right? So we do it only on special occasions. But if we take it a step further, maybe we can do it before each confession or every time we go for communion, right? And even a step further, maybe we'll do it at the end of every single day. Sit down with your notebook. What kind of sins? What, what did I say that I shouldn't have said? What did I do that I shouldn't have done? What are the thoughts or the feelings, the, anything that crossed my mind that were not righteous, right? And then taking it a step even further, if we do it immediately after the deed. I yelled at Irini this morning. Oh, I yelled. I shouldn't have yelled, right? So, and then the, and Pope Shenouda says the best way to do it is to give account for ourselves before we even commit the deed, right? Because we can't take time back, right? For, no matter how much I apologize to Irini for something that I said I shouldn't have said, it's not going to take back the effect of my words, right? Or my actions. So it's best if we actually do it right before we commit the deed. Is it, is it, is it right? Like, is it... Is it gonna, how is it going to affect people in front of me? How, what, what, how is it going to affect my relationship with God if I do this or if I see this or if I say this, right? So right before committing the deed, it just helps us to not even fall into that temptation or fall into that sin. So now we have made it through all the points and it's time for the pop quiz. Okay, are you guys ready? So these are, um, these are just small keychains and magnets, and these are all from the, um, uh, from Masr al adina in Egypt, okay, from the monasteries, okay? First question. No, Homa, Homa five, I think. <laughs> okay, first question. What are the two prayers that we can start with before um, giving account of ourselves? Yes. Sorry? Good job, yes. Yes, yes, amazing. What's your name? Virginia. Virginia, Alan. Good job. Okay. Okay, you get to pick. 
Okay. Oh, you're welcome. It's okay. No worries. Okay, second question. Um, what are the three truths or facts that we keep in mind before we start uh, giving account of our sins? Oh, may or may not. <laughs> may or may not. <laughs> yes, Simina. I need all three. Like God is merciful. Sah. All sinners. Sah. But God loves us. Yeah. Good job. Amina. Good job. Very proud. <laughs> What does it mean? <laughs> okay, third question. Okay, uh, fill in the blanks, okay? We need to be our own blank and not blank. La, uh, guys, uh, raise up your hands. <laughs> yes. A good job. What's your name? Peter. Peter. Uh, Peter. 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 <laughs> Here. You're very welcome. Okay. Two more questions. Um. Okay. Fill in the blanks. Okay. The presence of blank blank. Only highlights my blank blank. <laughs> Sorry, is that word? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll make it easier. Okay, the pl the presence of external blank only highlights my internal blank. <laughs> uh, oh, I'll make it. Yes, Irini. La la, Irini. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Only highlights my internal weakness, but the presence of external eba. Uh, Distraction. Uh, <laughs> pressure, pressure, pressure. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> okay, last question. Um, hey, last question. Okay, uh, someone, I need four of the, I think it was eight or nine steps on how to give account of ourselves. Any four, any four. Uh, it doesn't have to be in order to, so easy. Top three. <laughs> three. <laughs> yes, Tony. Oh, oh, you have the picture, Tony. Tapa ira hai Tony. Ira hai uta khud ke. Yes. I have it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, two prayers. Yes. Uh, keep in mind the three truths. Yes. Uh, be open and honest. Yes. 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 Hello, hello. Confession. What's after confession? Hey, after confession, you Yes. Huh? After confession. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Good job, you don't. So proud. Yalla. You have to say it one more time. Yalla, Tony. Say it one more time. Yeah. I have to Quiet time, two prayers, open my eyes to see my sin and speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Three truths and facts. God is merciful and kind. We're all sinners and God loves, loves us in spite of our sins. And there is no sin greater than, the, than God's mercy. Be open, honest, serious and stern. Stop the blame game. Confess it. Treatment plan. And conclude with prayers. And if you guys have any questions, Abuna Botrus is more than willing to answer questions. <laughs> Oh, uh, and the asila? Oh. And the kaya? And the kaya? Okay. Thirty-six. Oh, Amir, go for it, Amir. Yalla, go, go for it. Yes. Example, the three servants. 
التالنس يس يعني انا صعبان عليا التالت ابو تالنت الاخراني ده اه يعني تفتكري يعني واي هي ديدنت انفست وليه هو كان خايف انفست يعني وايه الحل يعني ده مبدئيا الحاجه الثانيه او السؤال الثاني سؤال من سؤال One question at a time. One question at a time. One question at a time. Why did he didn't invest? Yes, yes, exactly. That is very true. What do you think, Amir? I think fear. Fear of investing and losing. Yes. Success. Yes. Success. Or he might even sometimes, and I feel like, and we don't even recognize our talents. يعني we don't really appreciate what we have. You know, it's like it's like we have something, but it's not like maybe until other people point it out or until our father of confession pointed out, we don't really recognize it as talent. So we don't really, so we don't really use it. Yes. Is it healthy giving accounts quite often? How much is too much or how much is not much? There's not too much. There's not too much unless un, un, like unless you're falling into that despair or excessive guilt that we talked about, right? Um, at the end of every day, before you, as, again, like the ultimate thing that we should be aiming for, like Pope Shenouda said, is giving account of ourselves before we even commit the deed, right? So it, it, let's say we do it every day. What's wrong with doing it, doing it every day? It's, 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 it doesn't have to be this very complicated thing, right? Just five minutes before you go to bed, what did I say? What did I do? Is there anything I should have done but did not do, right? Any but thoughts or feelings? Is that going to be healthy? And it's not going to make me say, yani, always suspicious or masses? لا. I feel like if anything, it's going to be helpful. عشان you're going to realize حاجات that you keep doing it and you might not, might not even re realize in home these are shortcomings or virtues that you lack. And then the next day, you can you can start working on them. Can I add something? Yes. I think it's also why you're doing it. Like it, it depends on I'm going into it or I'm doing this because I want to put myself down or I want to be better. So that's why yes. I'm doing it. So yes. having that mindset of why am I doing it would help. Uh, not fall into that extreme mm -hmm. guess. Yes, right. totally agree. Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, just to sorry. add on to that sorry. one, I think you have to remember that first and foremost, it's it's with God. Like I'm going to sit down and examine yes. myself, but I'm not. You know, no matter what I do, I can't fix myself. So I have to admit and recognize the problem, and then put it in God's hands, like the two prayers that you said. Yes. And God is the one who's going to fix it. So even if I fall, and even if I recognize that I have a million sins, it's it's on Him to do. I'm going to do my effort, but. But then surrender. Yes. Yeah. Totally agree. Okay. <laughs> yes, one, one, one more thing about the about the parable of the of the talents. Uh, what? How did the third servant describe God? Yes. Yes. He says, "I, uh, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man." Reaping where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. And what are the facts that we learned about God? He's merciful. He's merciful. Like he loves us despite our sin. Yes. And no sin is greater than his mercy. So where did he get this description from? His mind. Deception of the devil, believing the deception of the devil, because, and 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 it seems because this is how the Lord describes him, and we we trust that the Lord is fair, the Lord is fair, and this is how the Lord describes him. Uh, the Lord answered and said to him, "You wicked and lazy servant." So there is wickedness and laziness, and this wickedness and laziness manifested uh, 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 became a lens where he saw God as a harsh. So there is a misconception, there is a disconnect from God, from the get-go. There is a disconnection <clears throat> because the way he described God is totally different, it's totally not true from, how, from who God is. So there is a disconnection from God, and this is wickedness. What is wickedness? Is being disconnected from God, being away from God, not trying to get to know God. But if I get to know God, it's like when someone tells you, oh no, this person, uh, uh, really is, is an annoying person. <laughs> 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 
معلش هي اللي يس يس سو اف اي توك ذس اند اي بيليف ذات without getting to know who Irini is, I'm going to believe that Irini is, a, is, is an annoying person. Just because I am wicked. Because I'm wicked. Because I want to believe something wrong. So why did I take this description? Maybe she is not. Maybe she is annoying. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I want to say is, is the devil tries to put in our mind images about God that are lies. That's number one. And it would be wickedness not to examine that. So it's, 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 I also need to examine who God is. That's why I read the scripture. That's why I read his, his, his word. That's why I come closer to him to get to know him. Not based on how what people say. I like the Samaritan woman story. Because she uh, 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 left the jar, went to the city, and come see. You come and examine for yourself. See who this person is. And then the end of the conclusion, now we believe, not because of what you said, but because of what we have heard. So we hear, but it is my responsibility also to go and examine who is God. And come and have this connection with God to have correct belief about who is God. So God judged him based on his perspective, which is wickedness. And laziness. You know, he didn't do his, his effort to get to just get to know God. Have you tried to come to, to check who God is? And this is laziness. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amy. That was really, really